This is Sophie Monk, and you're on WithoutYourHead.com. All right, and we are back, and now we are joined by the... I almost call him the vampire. He is the vampire. The vampire Santa, Sal vampire Lizard. Santa. How you doing, Mister Lizard? Well, I'm not the vampire right now. Mm. <laughs> no, you're the good. You're the good guy right now. He's the, right. Right. We had a little debate earlier. If the vampire Santa was, is what you know? Do you put on the, the contacts, to make your eyes black? Do you put on the fangs, or do you, do you hide the fangs and put on contacts over the black eyes? Is that to hide your real identity? You know, it's really hard to say. Sometimes uh, either character feels natural for me. Uh-huh. So, but the truth of the matter is, is uh, you know, I slip in the fangs because I I have to be able to take them off to show children that I'm not really such a bad guy. Last thing I want to do is upset children. Yeah. Now adults, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that I, I do you find that. that adult that more adults uh, are uh, are scared by uh, the vampire Santa than than children? Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, I, adults tell me that uh, the vampire Santa creeps them out, but yet for some reason, <laughs> man, children seem to love the vampire Santa. Now, why do you possibly think that a vampire Santa would creep any adult out? I have no idea, but I do know this. She probably wouldn't want me to say this, but my good friend, Brenna Roth, um, Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know her or not. She's a scream queen, a tromat, but she will not look me in the face while I'm wearing those black contacts. She said they just creep me out too badly. So I actually carry sunglasses because otherwise what she does is it looks funny, but she will turn her back to me and carry on a conversation with me. (laughs) She can't look down. (laughs) <laughs> you know, yeah. She just says, "I'm sorry, those eyes are too creepy. You look like you're possessed." Uh, now that we, is true. We talked to you about the eyes because I know Annabelle here has been uh, trying out the contacts. Now, how long can you keep those in for those black eyes, and how much of a pain are they? Well, they are a pain, but I will tell you this: I uh, when I first got them, I could only wear them for about five hours before I had to take them out. And but now that I've learned, you know, like the right drops that seem to work for me. Uh, uh, I've actually been able to wear them up to 22 hours. That's how long wow. I was awake time with them in. Wow. So, why? Yeah. What would why call was upon I- you in life to have you wear those for 22 hours? Because for people that don't know, they're full sclera uh, contacts. They're not just the iris. They're the whole right. eyeball. That's a big deal. That's very, from what I've heard, very uncomfortable. But as you, yeah, you've gotten used to it. It is, but what, yeah, I've gotten used to it. And here's the thing, you know, I'm, I'm just one, one time Phil Kim uh, from Famous Monsters said, you know, I heard you still love your fans. And the thing of it is, is I do. And if, if I can do something uh, that my fans appreciate, I typically do it. And since so many people come to get their uh, photo ops with me, on Saturdays when I dress up as the vampire Santa, I try to leave my lenses in as long as I can for them. Uh, and that way I go to the party and everything else. And so people are getting their pictures taken with me at my table. And then they, we go to the party and of course, you know, then it's party and the girls get a little bit drunker and a little bit looser and, and I get a little more happy and, uh, silly. you know, <laughs> and silly, right. <laughs> oh, so. Well, when did the, Speaking uh, of, do you remember uh-huh. when we were in Kalamazoo and uh, you guys were trying to get hot dogs at the hot dog stand and that crazy <laughs> and the girl was feeling it was yes. Up. Uh-huh. yes, that was so weird. That was yes, one of the strangest experiences I, I think I've ever she, had in my life. She really loved Kalamazoo. Well, you know, I know, she came of, up and was telling me to not uh, film. I thought she was like <laughs> undercover police. I know, and I know. had a good conversation I, with her. She was just a weird gal, but, you know, I like the fact that she was filling herself up. I mean, I was kind of <laughs> enjoying that, you know. And she didn't even and look even like even she, was she was enjoying weird. it. Huh? She no, was no, just, she like, didn't like talking she with and running her hands up and down her body. It was so weird. Yeah, yeah I know. Weird. You know, and then the, I kind of stood over there and was mimicking her, and I think I almost got caught. A couple of times. <laughs> yeah, I, th- um, I think she was a little bit out of it to really notice what you're doing. No. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the thing of it is, is, uh, the, you know, I'm all for women rubbing themselves. I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, and whenever possible, I like to promote that kind of stuff. But she was just weird. Uh, although, you know, even for I, a vampire I, Santa, 
this girl. Well, you know, it. and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying I wouldn't have done it, but uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I probably would have if she had have been so inclined. Because, well, you know me, I'm a dog. <laughs> so I have heard. You will do anything. I for saw your the gentler side mm-hmm. of Sal Lizard, I think. That's right. I was, I was, That's I was right. one of the lucky ones. Mm-hmm. Saw uh-huh. the sweet, tender, tender yes, man. That's of course, inside. I remember. That was a great night. It was. That was a lot of fun. I yep, hope we see each other at a con soon. What do you? What are your upcoming conventions? Do you have anything going on? Well, you know, strangely enough, uh, I don't know whether I should say, say this on your show, but I will anyway, because you know, really, I don't give a shit. So, oh, I'm sorry. Am I allowed? To yeah, say you that? can say, you say anything whatever you want. you want. If you're worried about our show, you say whatever mm-hmm. you want. If you're well, you worried know, about something else outside of it, I don't. That's up to you. Yeah. But. Well, see, my show is completely uncensored. If I want to say fuck, I say fuck. Yeah, yeah you can hear. Too. That's how it is here. Oh, okay, terrible. Good. Don't worry about so, it. So, um, so I don't know whether I should say this, but I, 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 I mean, so I will. Um, there's two conventions in Indianapolis that are well known. Yes. And the thing is, I can't seem to get into either one of them. And even though neither one of them will admit it, other people that seem to be in the know tell me it's because I did the other convention. You know, they're in such competition. Yeah. And yeah, so it's crazy. Yeah, it's it really, weird. It's, I, I wasn't really into this for a long time, but when I first met Neil, he told me kind of the vibe of horror conventions. And even the short, I've only been with the show not even two years. And in that time, things have changed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's very and you know, competitive, it's, it's very possessive it is, of the people that go. Right. As a matter of fact, I know a guy who uh, who created a certain act and he did it at one show. And then when he went to another show to do it, they said, wait a minute, we own that act. And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm the one who created it. They go, but you did it at our show first. Yeah, and he's there's, like, there's no yeah. contract involved. That's tough shit. No. Not yeah. And uh, so what happens is in March, I grew up in Indianapolis, Indiana, so I got a lot of friends that I went to high school and college with there, and I got family members. So what happens is so many of them found out that I done these horror conventions and stuff, and they're like, oh, man, I wish I'd have known I would have came. So now, mm-hmm. since nobody will have me, a friend of mine, Bill Levin, I don't know if you know him or not, but he's... Um, He's a normal uh, advocate and um, mm-hmm. running for legislature in Indiana oh, wow. to try to yeah. repeal the marijuana laws. And um, one of the things that happens is he throws these uh, things like spring flings and all that, he calls them. So he's yep. having a uh, it's sponsored by cold cock whiskey and um, he's having a cold cock whiskey spring fling. And he's invited me to come there as a guest. So, Sometime around March the 23rd or the 30th, I forget which, um, I'm going to be in Indianapolis, Indiana for the Cold Cock Spring Revival hmm. or whatever he's calling it. And What um, else is going on to that? If people out in the audience are kind of wondering what the hell is this thing, because I am, you know, what well, is this about? It's, other than you being there and, and being involved in I was going to say it would, it would be a perfect place for Artist of the Month, Dead Dick Hammer, to be at Cold Cock. Oh, yeah, you know it. And... Mm. Um, what happens is uh, uh, he's going to have bands there. Um, there's going to be an art show involved. Usually there's a tattoo competition. Uh, you know, um, He does a lot of things like that. It's a real myriad of stuff, but it, it's primarily for the uh, tattoo and goth uh, subcultures that he really Very tried. Cool. To- yeah. Uh, Bill cold Levin. Cock. What? Cold cock what? I'll put up a link. Cold cock whiskey? Oh, uh, you know what? What I'll do is I'll send you a link to to his uh, event, and that way. All right, yeah, that'd be great. Cool. So anybody uh, but, that's interested out in the audience, go to the Facebook group, and we'll have a we'll have a link up for you to check it out. Good, good. So other than that, you know, I'm going to be back in Indianapolis uh, uh, probably in January or February. To I think we're going to be shooting a trailer for a film uh, that's being produced by Jason Hignite called uh catacombs and i'm going to be playing a german scientist in that really and yeah ken forey will be in it a number of other people and um um, but yeah we're going to be arriving it's sometime in january february uh they're going to let me know the specifics but he just asked me today if i'd be available during those two months and i said oh sure so um so i'll be back in indianapolis for that now you guys are hanging out on the east coast aren't you Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're in the Boston area, and he's down on the Cape. Right, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I remember because I was coming up one time, and I was supposed to get together with you. Um, but mm-hmm. 
let's see. I know uh, right now I'm in, uh, of course, in New Hampshire, and I'm going to be heading down to Georgia on uh, Christmas Day. Well, some point after I quit my Christmas Eve uh, visits, uh, I'll I'll be heading on down to Georgia. Mm-hmm. Now you said you're going to oh, go on. I'm sorry. Oh, I think I'm going to go down to Florida and catch uh, the Bloody Jug Band in concert and maybe take my 26 year old daughter who to Disney world because she's expressed that she'd like to go there. And last time I took her, I think she was like eight years old. That's very and, sweet. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. You know, I went I, a few years ago and it really was, it was much better than, uh, than I remembered it as a child. I went with a, a friend and a couple of kids and mm-hmm. it, it was a lot of fun. Well, you know, when it comes to my daughters, what happens is I, I'm, I'm very much like Steve Martin and, uh, and uh, the parent, uh, or uh, whatever it's called, Father of the Bride, where he yep. keeps looking at his daughter and he sees a little girl. I still see my daughters that way. I, yep, I don't see them good. adults. You said you were going to play a you know, German scientist. How often have you been in movies uh, where you're not playing, you know, like the Sal Lizard role? Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, almost every movie I've been in, I've been some sort of a character. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let me see. I... Um, Probably the one that you know I uh, I'm best known for as far as uh, as uh, having a lead in. I played the part of Hillbilly Bob in Hillbilly Bob Zombie. It was probably the second worst film I ever did, but I got to tell you, it's my bestseller. <laughs> and the reason it is is because it's so absurd and so bad that people really like it. And I'm me and Brenna Roth, who I mentioned earlier, we're the only two professional actors in there. And Ray, it was his first uh, attempt at directing a film. So it's full of so many uh, continuity errors and logical errors and things like that. It's just downright silly. But everybody who reviewed it said, you know, uh, that my acting was very, was very good in it. You know, that, uh, obviously that I was a professional compared to everybody else. Mm-hmm. And I actually wrote all the comedy in it. Uh, and it's got some sick jokes in it mm-hmm. because I think we pulled every possible redneck hillbilly joke pot, including incest and everything into that, <laughs> into that. Uh, that's, a, that's a weird coincidence, Neil. Yeah, that's a conversation that's actually coming up later in the show. We're going to, we're going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the scandal of duck dynasty. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it raised some questions earlier. And that was one of them about the stereotype of hillbillies. But at any rate, I just saw on IMDb, Hill Billy Bob Zombie, 2009. It's got a mm-hmm. rating of 2.1. <laughs> but yeah, yeah there it's not so great. But <laughs> you said but, the- you know, when I go, mm-hmm. what always gets me is I go to conventions and I have copies of it with me. And people will come up to me and they'll say, oh, I saw you in Hill Billy Bob Zombie. And I go, oh, yeah? Did you like it? They go, like it. I loved it, man. I want to buy a copy from me. <laughs> And uh, oh, I'm always hilarious. Yeah, Low under, under my on IMDb <laughs> means uh, sometimes means awesome. Yeah, and well, IMDb you know, is not necessarily like uh, giving the ratings that it needs to get. Sometimes uh, low ratings, like you said, sometimes sometimes things are so bad that yeah. they're amazing. That's what I tell everybody. Right. You know, that's why they like me. Well, I have a exactly. friend named Derek who's bragging to everybody that his film, which got distributed and. Uh, is being billed as the worst film ever made. And I said, you know, really? I mean, because there's a few like, uh, 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 you know, uh, The Blob and some of these others. Uh, Rotten uh, Troll Tomatoes, 2. Yeah. Play you know, nine. but no. Yeah. Everybody wants that title of the worst, I guess. Mm. Now you wears like a badge of honor. You did say it was the second worst movie you ever did. That begs the question, what was the worst? Well, if I if I told you that the worst one was Abe's Tomb, then Carl Merritt would be really upset with me because he told me, he goes, one time he goes, Sal, I heard you were bad-mouthing the film. And I said, well, you know, it, it sucks. And he goes, but you're supposed to tell you're in the film. And I said, well, yeah. And he goes, you're supposed to be telling everybody what a great film it is to help me sell it. And I go, I'm not going to lie to people. I said, you know, I have to give you credit for for at least making the film. But, I mean, let's face it. It, it sucks. <laughs> so. I applaud that honesty. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, though. You don't I sell people on something that you really don't believe it. in. Yeah. Say what? What's the name of that one again? Oh, Abe's Tomb. Eggs? Abe's Tomb. Abe's. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Right. Abe's Tomb. And, uh, you know, and the thing of it is, is uh, it's a great movie about vampires taking over. And uh, I upset the, the the director and producer a lot, and I didn't mean to, but he kept asking me, 
so what do you think? One day he was asking me for suggestions. And so people that were on his uh, film crew were actually walking up to me going, maybe we should just ask you instead of going to him, which really upset him. But, um, you know, and, and then I was, I, I'm a comedian by nature anyway, you know, and so I was saying, you know what would really be funny is if we did this. And he goes, well, wait a minute, this is a serious film. This is a very serious film. And yet at the same time, during the fight scene, he used the music from Mortal Kombat, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. He does not. Really. That'd be yes, amazing. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's incredible. Fatality. Now I want to see it. Yeah. That's well, you know the that movie is that music isn't really good even in Mortal Kombat. <laughs> right. So I'd like to see it in something else. Yep. Here but is. Carl's a great guy, but he's been angry with me ever since uh, I said that. So he'll probably be angrier now if he ever hears this, and he probably will because somebody will call him and tell him he goes to conventions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> probably Maybe he should come on the show and defend himself. <laughs> yeah. Defend <laughs> anyway, his honor. I'd be that I'll call him and say, "Hey, Carl." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we will book the Abe's Tomb reunion at the next convention we're at. Yes. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring in millions. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. When, when did you uh when did you uh create Sal Lizard? Sal Lizard? Oh, hell, I've always Well, oh, well no, the, vampire, the vampire the vampire vampire set. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I didn't create, I kind of created Sal Lizard too. When I was in high school and, you know, a younger guy, I was, uh, I was, uh, much more shyer and introverted. And then I got into the theater group in, uh, in high school and suddenly I wound up coming out of my shell and, and I've been an entertainer I consider ever since. Uh, so yeah, I kind of created Sal Lizard, but, um, the other thing is uh, the Vampire Santa. That happened about six years ago when um, people were asking me all the time. They would say, what is Santa doing at a horror convention? And I would try to explain to them that I'd been in over a dozen films. Actually, it's closer to two dozen at that time. And that, um, you know, most of them were horror films. And, you know, just because they didn't know my work, you know, but I just got tired of saying that. One day, Brenna Roth, remember, I mentioned her a couple of times. Mm-hmm. She... Um, I was coming to Cinema Wasteland in Ohio, and she said, why don't you bring your Santa suit? And um, and I want to do some virtual Christmas cards. And I said, okay. So I'm standing there, and I'm with two of Carl Merritt's gals, and um, they're, they're modeling with me. And at one point, uh, we were doing these sexy uh, Santa virtual cards. And like at one point, I said, uh, uh, I think you've been on my naughty list and, and the gals. Oh, uh, I think it was Jan- Janet uh, J said, uh, yes, I, I, I'm afraid I have. And then the other gal, and I can't remember her name, but she goes, uh, I said, you've been on my naughty list too. She goes, yes, I have. And I go, you sound very proud of that. And she goes, yes, I am. And then I pulled her tube top open and looked down in it. And I went, ho, 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 somebody's going to have a Merry Christmas. And, uh, you know, so it was a lot of that kind of stuff. And um, then I walked, wound up after it was over with walking into the dealer room because somebody had asked me if I would come in and they could get a picture of me in my Santa suit. And everybody flocked around and wanted pictures. It took me three or four hours before I was able to go change. And then somebody said, you should always bring your Santa suit to conventions, but I couldn't figure out how to justify Santa being at a convention until I realized, oh, I've got these black scleral lenses and these vampire teeth. And I put it all together and created the vampire Santa. And now he's my most popular character, even though, I have only appeared, made one cameo appearance in a movie that just came out about six months ago as the Vampire Santa. So uh, I created the character, and uh, and he's like I said, now my manager can't get me into, excuse me, into a horror convention unless I agree to do the Vampire Santa. So yeah. I do it every Saturday. Are you proud of that though? You know, it's something that you just created. It's this character. Yeah. It's all yours. It's not from something else. You know, from a movie you were in and you took it and started doing it at conventions. It's something you just right. created and you've been booked and people know you. I mean, everyone knows uh, Sal Lizard. All the conventions I'm at. Well, you know the the interesting thing is is as a real bearded Santa and, and a guy who's been uh, you know portraying Santa for over twenty years. Uh, I've been in several, I am in several Santa groups. And when they started seeing pictures of me on Facebook as a vampire Santa, all of my fellow brethren, well, not all of them, but a number Are of them. Are they going to ban I'm you? You're going to be black. They were like, 
you're painting Santa, you're portraying Santa in a bad light. You're making him look bad. And I'm like, dude, first off, none of us are the real Santa. We're just <laughs> entertainers. Mm -hmm. And you guys all have jobs. If I'm not entertaining, I'm not making any money. I just found a way to make Santa pay off uh, year round. Well, then what happened was they started seeing these pictures of girls with and me on, on Facebook. Where, and the girls were saying, I love Sal. And the guys were saying, oh, yeah, he's awesome. So then these same damn fans <laughs> contacted me going, hey, where can I get some vampire teeth and some black lenses <laughs> like those? And I basically said, you know right, what? If you could see my middle digit extended, that's where you can get them. <laughs> you know, bad mouth me. And then all of a sudden you're trying to steal my gig. <laughs> exactly. now, I, I think the last convention was at Kalamazoo. You stopped selling the uh, I Slept With Sal Lizard t-shirts. Yeah, I, I've stopped. I've decided to get out of the t-shirt business because as much as people like them and I've enjoyed them, um, uh, the, it's just a lot of inventory to carry around mm -hmm. and it's yes. such an investment. And then when you have to order, there's always minimum quantities. So as soon as you run out of a size, you've got to order more. And, um, uh, so I found pin buttons and those are a lot cheaper. And if I want to, I can give those away and it doesn't cost me too much. And, uh, which I do when there's children that come around, a lot of times I give them a vampire Santa as cool button. And, um, but, and I can put that same, uh, thing on a pin button and girls can keep it on their purse all the time. And, uh, but I am going to miss the, all of the girls knowing that my, they are going to bed with my face on their chest. Uh, you know, uh, just, I'm thing. disappointed. I can't say what? I'm disappointed. I don't have that opportunity. Well, wait a minute. I have, I have a few left. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I got to tell you this. There is a friend of mine and she's, she's a lesbian gal and she go, call, contacted me and she goes, Sal, I just want you to know that my girlfriend is pissed off at me. And I said, why? And she goes, every night I would wear your t-shirt to bed as a night shirt. And she would say, she said to me one night, she goes, you know what? You always bring this strange guy into bed with us. And I just don't think it's right. He always is between us. And so I told her, I says, well, just turn the shirt inside out. And that way she doesn't have to look at my face and I get to look at your boobs. You know, so, so, <laughs> I'm a problem solver. What can I say? Thinker. You, you said, you know, some of the, uh, the people, uh, said you were bad mouth and sand and did any of that ever like go like real far where it did like, uh, it did cost you like any like jobs as a Santa. Oh yeah. Yeah. What happens is, uh, when my book came out, um, my book being Santa Claus, one of the things that happened was my publisher said, you know, we want you to take out the part about you being an actor in a stand up comic in the biography section. And I said, why? And they said, well, because uh, we want people to read this book and think, wow, this guy could be Santa. And I go, you know what? You guys are making a mistake because anybody that knows me knows I'm no saint. And uh, and I go, I'm just a guy. And they said, what do you mean? I says, I like to drink beer, fart, and chase women, just like the other guys. And uh, so they said, well, we're going to play that down. So I appeared on Fox and Friends. And when I did... Um, Fox and Friends kind of twisted things around to make it look like I was uh, in this war on Christmas thing. When I actually told them, I thought Christmas was doing pretty well, actually. And um, so they, um, so somebody from the Huffington Post took all of the footage uh, from my Fox and Friends interview and interposed uh, some of the images of me at conventions where I'm very adult telling jokes like, um, you know, I tell girls, if you don't leave me cookies, I'm going to lick your pie. And, uh, there was, yeah. I think, yeah, this girl was walking by and, and I was talking to an interviewer and I said, well, if there's one thing old men appreciate, it's young women. And of course, uh, you know, I told the story about the time Ron Jeremy called me a fucking genius because he said I found a way to legitimize Santa being a dirty old man. <laughs> and they put all of that out there intermixed with my saying, oh, I love children. Children just need something to believe in and all that. And so it, they said, you know, Fox and Friends should have uh, Googled their Santa because their Santa's a dirty old pervert. And um, it was kind of funny because my partner got really upset. He goes, you know, oh, this is going to cost us our book. It'll never sell now. Actually, the sales shot up like crazy. But um, um, I, I, I can't do malls anymore. I was told by a couple of photo promotion companies, they said, look, the malls are willing to have you, but you've got to get rid of all that vampire Santa stuff. 
you've got to hide it somehow. And I go, you know what? That's how I make the rest of my living. I mean, my living the rest of the year. I'm not going to do it. So uh, if I if the, if it costs me working at the malls, that's okay because the malls are the cheapest paying gigs that Santa can have. So, yeah. uh, you know, so and I, I really want to to me. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to bring up, it was really interesting you talk about like the two sides of Santa. And it just seems like society can't handle that people have that you can be a good person and still be really fucked up at the same time. Like I'm pretty fucked up, but I do care about people more than I let on. I mean, I like the same thing. I really like children and animals and stuff like that. I might talk about putting a baby in a fry later Mm -hmm. perhaps now and again, but I think the bottom line is I'm pretty decent. Neil is pretty decent and people don't seem to get that. Well, see, a lot of people have this preconceived notion about people who go to horror conventions. They think that uh, they're satanic uh, or they're devil worshippers or they're uh, somehow they're very anti whatever, anti religion. Or but the truth of the matter is, is uh, and that they 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 secretly want to kill people. <laughs> but people at that I've met at horror conventions and other actors that are involved in horror movies and things are some of the most generous and loving people I've ever met. And the the horror community has raised more money, I think, than any other particular genre uh, of a movie goer. And, you know, they're always, I I mean, I've contributed to, pardon? Like you hear about some of these groups. I think it's all pretty legitimate too. When horror people like scares that care, Raise a lot right. of money. I don't think it's getting channeled. No one's flying a jet. Some I won't name names, but some of these other big, big charities, the, the money is not being spent the way it should be. Right, and, right. Uh, no, I totally agree. I think that a lot of the people in the horror community are completely misrepresented. Actually, it's funny because the Kalamazoo convention, Neil and I were... It, now, I won't stereotype too much, but it, it was a, a very conservative uh, yeah, Christian the, the service taxi, yes. that, that gave us a ride from the hotel back out to the airport. And we were talking about, oh, we're, you know, we did this horror convention, yada, yada. And he was really, he, was, he acted curious, he was saying but he that, was really disturbed. He was saying that that's mm-hmm. good because it keeps you people from, like, killing killing people. And, like, the well, actor, I said that as a joke. He, the you guy know, himself he, said he, that. He occupied, and then he's like, he take, he take it very seriously that people at a horror convention were actually dangerous people. And, you know, Not I know just there's at some the convention, but he, out there. He even said the, the actors. Fuckers, he, but... he even said the actors were the same way. Like, if they weren't in those movies acting that out, they'd be out killing people. It was, it was, you know, it was kind of shocking that someone would have this uh, this this mindset in 2015. You know, and the thing of it is, is uh, if you're going to look at who has been responsible for the most deaths, usually it's the religious zealot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny you brought. And that's the thing that there's always every single group in the world. I don't care what religion or what your interests are. There's always going to be a tiny little percentage of those people that are homicidal psychos. That doesn't right. matter. It doesn't matter who you are. Was, Any group that you're involved in, there's homicidal psychos in there. It just depends on how they express it and show it, and whether or not, you know, whether you hear about it in the news or not. There's it, crazy people everywhere, and there's good people everywhere. You can't pigeonhole. The horror community is being a bunch of bad people because they were all black and listen to crazy music and like watching movies about violence. It was I funny think, you brought uh, up a lot of the people the... like myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you watch stuff like that and that's fine, but it's it's not real. Like watching movie violence is not it's not real. If I see a commercial with some baby uh, out in Africa with flies in its eyeballs, I get upset about that. But I can watch. Mm-hmm. Watch, you know, human centipede, ass to mouth, people shit. Need. I don't fucking care. I don't care. Uh-huh. That doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. It affects me, but it's not like that's, who, oh, yes, I'd really like that to happen in real life. It's, you know, there's a difference between fantasy and reality. And the fact that people don't understand that is scary. That those people yeah. can't distinguish what a person sees as reality from what a person sees as fantasy. Right. Well, you know, one of the things that's, uh, I got a con, a uh, call from a, a filmmaker who lives in the Maryland area. And, uh, he said, you know, I've got this idea. He goes, you know, uh, 
He goes, you're really a good guy. And a lot of people, you know, see you as the, as the genuine Santa. But then when they find out that you do the vampire Santa, they get a little bit weirded out. And he goes, would you mind if this next year I do a documentary on you? And I said, a documentary on me he goes, yeah, I'd like to go to a couple of conventions uh, where you appear as the vampire Santa and let them see how you interact with children and people and stuff. And how, even though you look like a vampire, somebody one time said, you know, you got to be the friendliest vampire because you're still jolly. And um, yes. they said, uh, you know, and, and actually uh, do that and then transition that into you being the genuine Santa and going out and doing some of these things that you do with the Cub Scouts and, and, you know, and uh, uh, daycare centers and all of that. And he goes, just to let people see that, you know, even though you have these two very different personalities, you're still a great guy, you know, who's doing out there doing good. And I well, thought, I oh, that, that, that'll be fun. I think the truth is that the vast, I, probably every single human being on the planet does have those two you're more you're a multifaceted human being. It's just whether or not they will are free enough to show that. I um I this year I want to and I've already talked to a photographer about this, but this year what I want to do is I want to get a new photo taken. And I want it to be a straight on headshot where I'm wearing just a regular shirt and you know and and maybe a blue shirt or something. You see both my shoulders. And then on one shoulder I want a picture of me as the genuine Santa. And on the other shoulder, a picture of me as the vampire Santa. And because I tell people, I go, you know what? I, I really am a person that exists between these two different personalities, you know? Um, and I, I have my vampire side who is very lascivious and, and, uh, loves women and, and wants to lick their pie. But then I also have the genuine Santa part where I'm really concerned about children and not scaring them at all and uh, and trying to make people happy and and you know and and help them believe so uh, you know uh the one thing about it is is um i quit smoking because i didn't want children to see me smoking and then wonder about that i don't drink publicly you know unless it's an all adult thing and there's not going to be any children around um mm-hmm. although sometimes at, at a horror convention that's that uh line gets crossed by accident Mm -hmm. i was in um indianapolis as a matter of fact and i was at horror hound and i was sitting there in a in a chair in the lobby people were having their pictures taken with me and all and i've got a a veal and ginger ale and i'm dressed as the vampire santa and sure enough this little girl pops up in front of me and you know her it was like 12 30 at night you know and and uh, she's looking at me and i said oh let me show you these teeth are just fake. And I pulled them out so she could see that. And then I put them back in and her mother goes, honey, are you scared? And she shook her head. No. And I said, would you like your picture uh, uh, to get a picture with me? And I've of course set my drink over on a table and she nodded. And, and so I reached down to pick her up and, and as I'm trying to sit her on my knee, on my thigh, she actually folded her legs underneath her. So her, her uh, knees were on my thigh, but she wraps her arms around my neck and she whispers in my ear, I know you're trying to be scary, but everybody knows who you are. And, um, and you know, and then the very next day there was this gal that was with Billy Bob Thornton and I don't know her name, but she was like giving me a ration of shit because I was appeared as a vampire Santa in front of this little girl. And I said, you know what, bitch? <laughs> Cause that's, that's probably one of those times I said, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I said, that little girl saw me as Santa regardless. And I said, and I took my teeth out to assure her that, you know, it, I told her, I said, Santa likes to dress up and have fun too. And she was fine with that. And I said, you just need to get off your horse, bitch. You know? <laughs> I, I, I didn't care that she was with Billy Bob Thornton. Hell, you know, uh, you know, I just don't like it when people prejudge everybody. I try not to be very judgmental, yeah. but, uh, was- you know, um, you brought up earlier about, uh, you know, people getting, uh, think cause you go to uh, horror conventions, uh, you're satanic and all that stuff. That's very weird because, uh, besides the horror stuff, I used to do a lot of, uh, wrestling stuff. I actually did that before the horror movie stuff. And, uh, just recently a convention that I've gone to for the last, uh, eight years since 2005 and have, uh, promoted for, for eight years. Um, the promoter of that event, he sent me this big long, uh, letter about, uh, that I, that he's Christian and he doesn't like how I I uh, I push my satanic ways uh, on fell on people is very bizarre, 
And it's exactly what you're talking about. It's, he thinks because I go to this horror movie convention to talk about horror movies and I wear weird and have, things. have, like, secret Satan. Yeah, he thinks know, that, I, that I'm, he thinks oh, that yeah. I'm a Satanist. It's very, it's, uh, our, it's very uh, bizarre. Our gift exchange is called Secret, secret Satan instead of Secret Satan. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, he is well, not I know what you're saying. And, you know, the thing of it is, is I just feel like those people are being so narrow minded. You know, it's funny because uh, those are the people that preach tolerance mm-hmm. the most. Exactly. <laughs> and and, he and they're usually the ones that are intolerant. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and, and you nothing, know what? Their he lives kept... suck. That's the bottom line is if he, I would not want to have a life like that. I'm happy. I'm fine. If they want to crap on me, go for it because I know that my life is a bajillion times more fun and interesting than whatever they're doing. Yeah. And I'll say he, he owes me $360, which I've not got back yet. So I suppose that's very, <laughs> well, that makes it easy for yeah, you to crap on yeah. you. I suppose that's very Christian of him, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, one of the things that, um, is really, uh, uh, you mentioned wrestling. I don't know if you know this or not, but I actually wrestled once as a, as the vampire Santa. I did not know that. That's amazing. If you go onto YouTube, and I think you can find it, um, Vampire Santa wrestles Randy West is her name, and uh, we did that at um, there's at the Sci-Fi in the Valley convention. They always set up a ring, and they have wrestlers there. So the not this past year because this is when I did it, but the year before, uh, the guys kept telling me they wanted me to wrestle. So I said, you know, look. I only wrestle with women and it's usually between the sheets, you know, uh, if I'm going to be body slamming anybody, I want it to be, I'm so homophobic. It has to be a woman. And, uh, so sure enough, I'm at this convention and this gal walks up to me and she's got, she's Mike, you know, you can hear her over the PA system, but, uh, she goes, hi there. You're the vampire Santa. And I said, yes, I am. And she goes, uh, I'm Randy West. It's, uh, it's good to meet you. And I said, well, it's nice meeting you too. And then she goes, Last year, you told the wrestlers that you wouldn't wrestle unless uh, you were wrestling a woman. And is that right? And I said, well, yes, that is. And she goes, well, Sal, the vampire lizard, uh, Santa lizard, I'm calling you out. She goes, I'm a female wrestler and I'm going to, I want to see you up in the ring, uh, you know, in the ring at 3 p.m. or whatever. I said, well, all right. If I get to wrestle you, hell, I'll be there. And so, uh, yeah, I wrestled her as the vampire Santa. <laughs> Did you win? No. Oh. <laughs> Did you let her win? Well, here's the thing. When she tried to take me down <laughs> and I took her down and I'm holding her and then she, uh, I, I flipped her over and what happened was um, she was on top of me. And so every time the ref would start to count, I'd raise a shoulder up and say, please take your time because my face was like right between her legs. And, uh, so, uh, you know, I kept telling him, slow down the count. And then finally she got all three counts in and, and, uh, rolled off. I mean, the first thing she does is check her thighs and ask the ref, did he bite me? <laughs> so it was a lot of fun. Uh, the speaker, I, of- I did find it and I did, I did post it. Yes. There's, so the there's- world of without your head can now see that. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Sal is very pleased that, that his his wrestling match is now uh, posted on uh, on our Facebook. Oh, sure. Page. I actually am I'm curious to see this. I'm, uh-huh. I'm going to watch it when uh, when we have some free time here. Exactly. Yeah, mm. I, I think you'll enjoy it. I had a lot of fun with it. Mm. And besides, Randy wasn't a bad looker. So you know, anytime you're going to have a crotch in your face, it helps if the girl's really attractive. Uh, I, I had a wrestling match at a horror convention that I won, but mine was with Ed Gonzalez, so it's totally different. It was very informal. <laughs> yes. We need to take that to the mean streets, I think. Uh, Ed Gun- you know Ed Gonzalez? No, I don't. Uh, uh, you, well, you probably I, might. I know a lot of wrestlers from the conventions, but I just, I'm really bad with names. I remember women's names far more often than I do guys. Mm-hmm. Nope. Is there any uh, more news about the the game that they were making about you? Oh no, no, I hadn't heard anything about that. And and actually, the two scripts that were being developed around my vampire Santa character, mm-hmm. one of the guys seems to have dropped off the face of the earth, and the other fellow, you know, I'm not sure where he's going with it right now. But uh, I do have people that have expressed interest in investing and being in that film. So um, so I'm hoping that that work comes along pretty soon. Um, 
But uh, nope, or the comic book for that matter. Uh, I've got a guy who told me he was very interested in doing the comic book, but you know, I haven't heard from him. So sometimes I, you know, there's a, uh, in the acting world, I've learned that there's this uh, thing called the Hollywood promise where people say things and they really have every intention of doing it at the time. But as soon as you're out of sight, you actually drop out of mind because they're, they're concentrating on other things. Mm. Yes. I've had similar things happen here through the, yeah. through the show. Yes. Many times, many times. No yeah, one's went but to I'm still, uh, But that just means that it makes me want to do it that much more. So, yeah. Uh, you know, mm. well, well, happy. What would be some of uh, your favorite uh, memories from a convention? Uh, I think probably, um, you know, a a lot of it, uh, my favorite memories come from meeting the other actors and the fans. You know, there's people that walk up to me and and they say, oh, I've seen your work. Uh, One night, this girl, uh, I was in Indianapolis, Indiana at uh, Famous Monsters of Filmland, which was one of the first big conventions I did. And um, this gal walks up and she goes, uh, do you mind if I sit here? Or she says, is this seat taken? And I said, no. But I'm at this big round table that holds like 22 people. And I was the only one sitting there. And um, she takes the chair and she turns it around and sits, uh, uh, you know, with her legs across uh, the back. And she goes, I just want to tell you what a big fan I am of yours. And I, I jokingly looked around, you know. And then I turned back and looked at her and, and did the old finger in my chest like me. And then she goes, uh, she goes, yeah, you. And I said, uh, uh, oh, you probably can't even name two films I've been in. And she mentioned, she named six just right off the top. And uh, I said, wow, well, it, uh, I'm impressed. And she goes, yeah, I'm a big fan. And I said, well, it's always great to meet another fan. And she goes, wait a minute, you have other fans? And I said, well, yeah, you're not the only one. And she goes, do you have any stalkers? And I said, not that I'm aware of. And she goes, all right, I'll be your first official stalker. But I have to say, you know, we've been friends ever since, but she's the lousiest stalker I've ever met. She actually moved away from me. <laughs> and then I have to call her up every now and again to let her know what I'm doing, you know, because, well, like I said, she's really a bad stalker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there's a school for that. Yeah. Stuck but, you school. know, that I, I have made so many friends all over the place, and, and it really and truly is like a, a family. I was down in um, Kentucky at, um, oh, it was, um, what was the name of that? Uh, oh, Dead of Winter mm-hmm. and uh, in Somerset, Kentucky. And when I walked in, there was a friend of mine, and he was sitting uh, at one of the tables. He's a vendor, and he had a young lady sitting next to him. And uh, he's like, hi, Sal, and I'm going to change the names here to protect the innocent. But I'm like, hi, Ray. And he's like, uh, I said, uh where's Debbie? And he goes, Oh, she'll be, uh, she's around here somewhere. She's going to want to see. And all of a sudden I hear Sal and this girl, Debbie is walking towards me and she's got both of her arms spread. And as we start to hug, I reach around and I grab her bottom and give it a squeeze. And this young lady sitting next to this guy, she goes, um, she goes, did you see what he did? And he goes, yep. She goes, well, are you going to do anything? He goes, Nope. She goes, but dad, he grabbed mom's ass. And he goes, honey, that's Sal Lizard. He's been grabbing your mom's ass for the past three years. He goes, we see him at about six or seven conventions a year, and every time we see him, he squeezes your mom's ass. As a matter of fact, he'll squeeze it three or four times just during the convention. And she goes, so you're not going to do anything? He goes, nope. He goes, as a matter of fact, if Sal ever hugs your mom and doesn't squeeze her ass, I'm going to call 911 because he's probably stroking out. <laughs> well, Needless to say, during the convention, Debbie came over with her daughter a lot, uh, several times, and I would hug her and squeeze her butt cheeks. Well, on the last day, Debbie comes over and she goes, well, Ray's got everything packed up. We're getting ready to take off. I just came over for my last hug and squeeze. And I said, all right. So I hug her and I reach around, squ- squeezed her bottom. Then as, as you know, she broke the embrace, her daughter's looking at me and said, oh, hell, you're over 21. You might as well come on over and get initiated. So, um, all weekend long, her daughter kept straightening up my table. She kept saying, everything needs to be balanced out. She was really OCD. So what happened was um, she came over, and I hugged her, and I reached out, and I squeezed her left butt cheek. And, and then she said, and I said, there you go, kiddo. And she goes, thank you. And and uh, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. you got to come back. I said, you've been talking about balance all weekend. So I reached down and squeezed her right butt cheek then. And she says, and thank you for considering my OCD. <laughs> so... Uh, so that was kind of a fun thing, <coughs> mm-hmm. you know, just knowing that there are people out there that allow me to get away with some of the silliness that I do at that same convention. This guy walks up with his girlfriend and he goes, Sal, we're getting ready to take off. He goes, I don't know if you met my girlfriend formally. And 
I said, uh, no, I didn't. So she told me her name and I'm shaking her hand. And he goes, ah, oh, hell, give him a hug. Well, I knew what that meant. He was setting her up. So uh, I'm hugging her and I reach down and grab her butt cheek. And all of a sudden she turns her head towards him and she goes, he's grabbing my ass. And he goes, I know. And he's using the wrong hand. I wanted to get a picture. So I went ahead and said, oh, okay. So I reached down and grabbed her other cheek. And of course, we're both looking at the camera and she's smiling. And he put it on the internet. He's like, like a good detective, Sal's going to get to the bottom of my girlfriend or something like that. <laughs> And uh, so, you know, I get away with a lot of that stuff. I guess it's because I'm old enough now that I'm considered cute by some people. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I always like the old guys that could get away with, like, pinching the girls on the bottoms. And the gals would say, oh, he's a cute old man. I guess I've gotten to that point. Hmm. (laughs) That's not a bad thing to be so kind of, like, endearing that you just get away with grabbing people's body parts. Uh I know. That's what Neil is waiting for. Neil, you should just dye your hair to white. Uh Uh-huh. You know, grow out a little nice beard. Be, Mm -hmm. you know, that nice guy that can just grab women's asses and boobs and stuff. Well, I got to tell you, probably one of the neatest things in the world that happened to me was about, uh, it was not my last birthday, but the birthday before last. I actually was uh, at a convention in uh, uh, Columbus, Ohio, and um, it was my birthday. And on Friday, we're setting up, and all the vendors and, uh, well, not all the vendors, but most of the vendors and a lot of the actors were buying me drinks. And I'm trying to get everything set up, and yet I'm trying to drink these shots that were coming to me as fast as I can. So by the time the convention opened, I was feeling pretty good. And then, of course, the people came in and started buying me shots. So by the end of that first night on Friday night, I started saying, look, if you guys want to buy me a drink, that's fine. But, you know, I'll drink it. But I'd really rather have a birthday blowjob. And um, so... What happened was I actually had, over the weekend, I had four different guys say, well, my wife, girlfriend, significant other, whatever, uh, wants to give you a blowjob. I'm fine with that. And I was like, really? And um, this one guy, I said, you know, I said, three other guys told me they would be all right with that. And he goes, well, hell, you know, he goes, you know, you're Sal Lizard. He goes, everybody knows you don't want a relationship with a girl. You just need a blowjob. Hell, you'll send her back to my room when you're done. It's not like you're going to try to steal her. (laughs) <laughs> I don't buy that for a second. I think Sal Lizard would love to have a wonderful woman in his life. Uh, well, nice. I'd like to have a lot of wonderful women in my life. <laughs> what if it was a super awesome, wonderful woman and not just some. Uh, you know, been married four times. It just doesn't seem to suit. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. You know, I, the thing it is. Is I'm still friends with all my ex-wives, and um, uh, but uh, I, I'm a gypsy. You know, they all tell me they go. You know what? I'd like to I'd like to travel with you. You know, and see the world and all that. And then all of a sudden, it's like, damn, you travel all the time. I can't do this all the time. You know, and I'm like, I'm sorry. This is what I do. And so, yeah, fall by the wayside and get a divorce. And so, you know, but so you that's me. Cool I'm a gypsy. traveling lady to be with yeah, the traveling I, man. Hmm. I don't know what kind of lady that would be. Oh, you are. Well, I've seen you. you. You might be a lot of fun to travel with. <laughs> I'm pretty... I've, I think people think a lot more of me than what I really am to travel with. Oh. Neil and I are basically just horror nerds. We we do things that like 10-year-olds do. That's our entertainment <laughs> is acting like... Neil laughs because it's true. We uh-huh. act, we're we probably like junior high level of uh, entertainment. Sure. So, but you know what? You like I love being that. A ten, like a ten-year-old, yes, we're the people to roll with. Without a doubt. I like people who embrace their inner child, you know, and and uh, and I like people that are free-spirited. The, the I always say the shame of uh, for all of us is that we we were always told, "Look, you're getting older, act your age," you know, and and all of that, and you know. You got to put, you got to quit acting like a child. You got to act like a man. You got to be responsible. You got to do this. You got to do that. You know, and and really all we want to do is take off our clothes and run naked in the rain, you know, or in the sprinkler and, uh, and have fun, you know, and, um, but we're, 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 but everybody says, nope, you can't do that. Actually, there is. Because they've forced themselves to do that and they, they need to believe that's how life needs to be. So they don't get so depressed. They want to jump off a bridge. Because really, that's miserable. I really would rather be poor for the rest of my life and have fun than make even decent money and be miserable. 
Well, I will tell you this. There was a time when I worked as a stockbroker and I made a lot of money, but I most of it went up my nose and I was pretty miserable and I had a heart attack at a young age because of that. Then later on in life, I didn't have any money and I was pretty happy. But then I, I got involved with computers and and got my uh, you know I uh, became got my master's in computer sciences and I was making lots of money, but I wasn't real happy and I was kind of sick all the time. And then I lost the job with the big dot com bubble burst and had to reinvent myself as an actor. And now I don't have much money, but I'm having a blast. All of a sudden, I tell people my life uh, is all about dress up and make believe. You know. I get I get paid to create fantasies, but I'm not a hooker, you know. Uh, of course, I don't get paid as well as one either. But <laughs> so, yeah, well, well, like she was saying, we do we are very silly when we're traveling together. We just went to uh, Atlantic City in Philadelphia, but the whole time we were laughing and had a great time. And that's, uh, that's yeah, what I can believe that. Mm-hmm. I know you, Neil, and and of course I met you, Anna, uh, uh, at the uh, at the uh, uh, you know kind of got to know you more. Uh, I think we'd met before, but I really got to know you, I think, a little bit at Kalamazoo when when you yeah. were taping me as we were driving back to the hotel. That was the first time I've ever been interviewed while I was driving. <laughs> I mean, or video, videoed while I was driving. It was driving. very nice. Yeah, I have to get that nice, video up. That was a nice drive. Mm-hmm. Yep. It was nice because I really felt like we got, well, me, I'd never really known you before. I got to know you and... And you you had a lot of great things to say. I really enjoyed that trip. That, well, Thank you for giving us the ride, by the way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, you think me then, too. the most <laughs> awesome freaking car. It's like the Santa yes, Mobile. That, 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 it's yes, amazing. Uh, uh-huh. I was very envious. I'm that like, was, geez, I'm doing something wrong. That was the, That's what I need. I need an Annabelle Electra mobile. The first time I met Sal was actually uh, when he got out of the car. And I saw and I saw that, and I was like, well, that thing's pretty sweet. And then, then, like, I see Santa Claus coming out of it, and I was like... These conventions are pretty awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was at a convention in Ohio, and uh, what happened was uh, I had a white PT Cruiser then. And, and uh, But I had the LEDs underneath. Mm-hmm. So I dressed up as the Vampire Santa. I went out. And this is Henry Hill from the movie Goodfellas, and I'm on a show without your head. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 All right, and we are back here once again uh, with with Mr. Lizard, and uh, he was he was in mid story. I forget what story he's even talking about. Oh, I was talking about the time I was up in Ohio, and I'm driving through the parking lot of the hotel, and as I'm driving through with uh, with just my LEDs underneath, playing, uh, you know, uh, reacting to Midnight Syndicate, um, you know, everybody's chanting Sal. Sal, Sal. So I pull up underneath the awning. This is Cinema Wasteland. And I get out and I toss my sunglasses in the car and I yell, uh, Merry fucking Christmas, you assholes. And everybody cheered. And then some people came over and got their pictures taken. I told a few dirty jokes. And then I get in my car and I slowly drove away and back around the back side of the hotel. And then I got out. I came in the back door and walked back out through the hotel lobby under the awning. And I went, what the hell is everybody cheering about out here? And, you know, <laughs> so that was a fun gig for me. Um, you know, and then the next day, Ken's wife is like, Sal, I, I heard everybody chanting. And I went to my window and I looked down and I saw this. And I thought, that's Sal Lizard. He sure knows how to make an entrance. <laughs> so. I have a question for Mr. Sal Lizard. So we were talking about that, you know, you started this thing six years ago. Why? What What inspired you to go this route of being Vampire Santa? Well, like I said, it was just a case where people said yeah, I should bring my Santa suit to the conventions. And I just could not figure out a way to justify Santa coming to horror con- conventions until I vamped him up. And I did it just to see how it would go over. And Mm -hmm. uh, uh, mostly the goth kids especially just really loved it. And uh, Mm -hmm. the next thing I know, I've got girls walking up and throwing uh, a leg over each shoulder. And and I mean, and and, and that's with their feet behind my back. And, and, you know, Mm -hmm. and and for photos and stuff. And I'm like, hey, this is some good gigs here. And (laughs) and everybody was saying, hey, you know. Yeah, can you uh, can I get a picture of you biting my neck? And then one time I just decided for the hell of it. I was in I was in Indianapolis again at a convention, and uh, a gal named Debbie White, an attractive gal, she walks up and we're talking, and and I'm kind of flirting with her, and and uh, this guy walks up and goes, Hey, do you mind if I take a picture of you too? And I went, Well, if she don't mind, she goes, Of course not. See, and I didn't pick up on that, so 
I go ahead and I, I act like I'm going to bite her neck. And he's like, hang on just a second. It's a new camera. I'm trying to figure it out. So I, I let out a sigh. And while I was standing there, I said, by the way, do you know why it is that, uh, or do you know that uh, vampires are the only monsters that never have to chase their food? And she goes, what do you mean? And I said, vampires always get invited into girls' bedrooms. And I said, do you know why? And she goes, why? And I licked her neck and blew on it lightly. And she shuddered. And all of a sudden, the guy goes, okay, I'm ready now. So I acted like I was going to bite her neck. And he took the picture. And then he goes, now, can I get another picture of you licking my girlfriend's neck or my wife's neck? And, uh, and, I, and all of a sudden, I thought, uh-oh, I'm a dead man. And then he, t- but I went ahead and I did it. You know, what are you going to say? So then he takes his digital camera over and shows it to a buddy of his. And I thought, uh oh, now here it is. They're going to come over and beat the crap out of me. But no, the other guy, he drags his girlfriend over and goes, hey, can I get a picture of you looking at my girlfriend's neck? I'm like, well, all right. What the hell? That night I discovered that perfume tastes lousy, but that if you have the right attitude, you can get away with just about anything. <laughs> have you ever had someone get mad at you for, uh, for touching their girlfriend or their wife or anything? Not yet. Mm hmm. I, you know, and the thing of it is, I, I don't know whether it's it's because I minored in psychology in college, or because I I've done I've interacted with people enough doing comedy, or just that I've got a a good self survival instinct or something. But I always seem to stop just short of crossing that line. Mm-hmm. Do you think you know, there's a different line with different people? Can you kind of sense yes. that? Like, oh, I think I, you know I can't get away with too much with this. Right, right. Person. Yeah, there he is. Knows better than with me because I will freaking deck him. Uh, who me? <laughs> yeah, I'm freaking. Just let blessed. me just let me take my teeth out first because I think it would hurt, but it might be worth it in your case. <laughs> Time will tell, Mister Lizard. <laughs> but no, there happens. is there are certain people that I can talk to, and I can I, I seem to have uh, be able to get a feel for it, and uh, and uh, you know it's kind of like. Uh, I don't know what it is. I, I did Santa one time at a, at a cancer, uh, uh, the cancer ward at a hospital for children. And, um, what happened was the, the gal who was in charge, she goes, Oh, you know, it was incredible watching you. And I said, why is that? And she goes, well, with some kids, you would, you were very big and boisterous and very overt. And with others, you just kind of whispered with them and, and, and talked to them and they just seemed to come out of their funk. And she goes, and, and you just seem to know how to react with each child. This one girl, she didn't want to get her picture taken with me, so I went over and I was chatting with her, and, and uh, she was really upset because she had lost her hair. And so I said, well, you know, you're still beautiful. I says, but if you'd like, I can arrange for you to have some hair on your head. And I stood behind her with my beard over her head. And, uh, of course, she laughed, and she said my beard tickled her head, but she was, we got the picture. And, uh, and she was fine with that then. So, you know, I don't know. It's just something uh, a lot of people who have watched me with other people go, I don't know how you get away with the stuff you do, or I don't understand how you can get my child to do what others can't. And, and I don't, and I, it's not something I can explain. It just happens. And I'll um, be honest. I think it's because you really are a genuinely good guy. You really, I think you really put that out there. You're a genuinely good guy and, and kids know that mm -hmm. they just do. Kids know that. It's so funny because I was at a convention and, and uh, somebody said to me, what do you do? I was being interviewed and they said, what do you do when children come up to you? Because, you know, I was dressed as a vampire Santa. And there was a vendor who was across from me and I, he goes, can I answer that? And they said, okay. And he goes, my daughter met Sal at Scarefest and she had never, ever sat on a Santa's lap. She was afraid of Santa. But she walked up and she looked at him and he was dressed as the vampire Santa and he took out his teeth and said, I said, he said, don't be afraid. These are just fake. You know, Santa likes to dress up and have fun too. And this is like a big Halloween party. And, and so he goes, as soon as he put his teeth back and she walked over and climbed up in his lap. And I, as I took the picture, I told my wife, I said, this is the year we'll finally be able to get a picture of her at Christmas with Santa. And he goes, but she still will not go to any other Santa, but she's convinced that he's the real Santa because he likes to play and have fun. And, um, and you know, I just, uh, it's just one of those things where uh, a lot of parents, when they've said their kids won't have anything to do with Santa, 
that happened to me the other day at a, uh, a breakfast with Santa. These people go, well, our baby cries when we try to set her down in Santa's lap. And they came over and they set her down in my lap and she reached up and she was stroking my beard and she just sat there and they got the picture. And then it, her dad came over to pick her up and she started crying. And every time he'd put her down, she'd quit crying. And finally she just, uh, with her little cheek, she just kind of nuzzled up next to my beard and closed her eyes and went to sleep. And, um, you know, it's just one of those things where I don't know, it just, it's something I think children, like you said, and dogs can, uh, you know, and animals can sense whether or not you are afraid of them, dislike them or whatever, yep. you know? Agree. Totally yeah. agree. Mm -hmm. That's why all the children and animals flock to me. It's like the Pied Piper. I walk down the street and they gather in my wake. Mm -hmm. It's incredible. It's true. Yep. Neil's seen it. The baby's well, just I've never, looking. I've not seen them. I do know animals. Have, uh, I never, I've never been afraid of me. But uh. <laughs> can you imagine if three of us got together and just hung out with kids? It'd be like. It would. Oh yeah. We'd, it would. It would be on to catch I really a predator. Didn't believe that. Dude. Yes. I, I, I love the, <laughs> <that day. laughs> the thing and I love about so children is that they're so honest. That yes, which I love. I know it's really bizarre to me when people don't like children or animals. It's very weird to me. I don't understand. And I think part of it is I remember being a child. Mm -hmm. So it's really easy for me to be with kids because I remember I feel like I can relate with a child because I know I know how that was. You're just like a little person. Right. And I'm still childlike. I like doing stupid shit and children like doing stupid shit. So it works out really well. They're usually a lot more fun than adults. I still remember what it was like to be an animal. <laughs> Actually, I, I, was, I was an animal just last week. I was going to say, Back Neil, when Neil was on Jane. Dr. Moreau, when he was on the island of Dr. Moreau. <laughs> Back to the house of pain for you, Neil. Back to the house of pain. Uh, yes. What is the law? <laughs> that was a great movie. I love, I love all three of them. The story, yes, yes. What were you saying, Annabelle? I'm sorry. I don't know. Something about you being uh, an animal. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> that, that seems about right. So, uh, do you have anything uh, coming up? Uh, you must be very busy this week. Uh, I am extremely busy. Um, the thing is, is it's Christmas, and a lot of my friends go, oh my gosh, how do you keep your energy levels up? I think I, I, it's like at conventions. When people are having a good time around me, it just feeds me somehow. And, um, you know, these kids, when I walk into a party, I can be very tired or whatever. And when I say kids, I'm talking children of all ages here. Um, I go to parties where there's just adults, but they act very much like children at the parties. You know, it, I think that being in the presence of a Santa character, uh, especially if he's realistic enough, genuine enough, it allows you to let your inner child out a little bit and brings back some memories. And, and a lot of these uh, kids, uh, you know, they, they are so happy, at least during that party when I'm there. We sing songs. I tell them uh, stories, answer questions. And tonight it was kind of interesting because I even got a phone call from somebody uh, who said, me and my husband, we have uh, been Santa's helpers. And he read your book, and he said you are his hero. And uh, she goes, it would mean so much if if you just uh, if if he could call you up and talk to you, because he's really trying to work at becoming a Santa. And uh, your book just had him crying, and he said he's going to take a lot of information from your book and try to incorporate it in. And uh, you know, the thing it is, is I never really thought that I was going to be doing this kind of a thing. But, uh, but you know, since the book came out, that's been happening to me a lot. A lot of Santas have been coming to me for advice, and suddenly I'm the guru Santa. You know, I it's kind of interesting. But my energy levels are up because everybody's having fun around me, just like at a convention. And these guys, they go, I don't know how you can do it as many hours as you do it, and just sleep a few hours and get up and go at it again. And I go, well. A lot of that is from my convention experience, and uh, you know, this is uh, my time, so mm -hmm. might as well have fun with it. And you mentioned the book a few times. And what is the name of the book? Oh, it's it's being Santa Claus. It's a uh, it's basically uh, uh, a little over twenty years ago when I was first asked by a radio station to put on the red suit and help pass out toys. I never realized it was going to become a lifelong calling. So I made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, and you know, like the very first time a lady said to me. 
uh, you know what, Santa, uh, would you like to stay and have dinner with us? And I'm thinking, cool, you know, home cooked meal. I'm, I'm ready. So I said, oh, sure, I, I could stay. And then I realized all of a sudden now her kids have access to Santa and, um, and she hadn't even started dinner yet. So they're bombarding me with questions, which I had no answers. And pretty soon I remembered that I had promised Mrs. Claus I would get back to the North Pole and help the elves. So I got it the heck out of there, heart racing and breathing hard, thinking, oh, did I screw up or, you know, and, and I didn't always have the right answers, but now it's just, you know, it seems like, uh, they come to me and, um, but so it's 20 years of my experiences as Santa and some of the things that I've learned about the true meaning of Christmas as a result of the people I met. And uh, where can you get that? Do you bring do you bring it to all the conventions? Can you get it like on I Amazon? Do, I bring it to the conventions with me. Uh, last year, uh, November the eighth was when the hardback was released, and uh, it's it's been five stars almost continuously on Amazon for the past year. Occasionally, it'll do, drop down to like four and a half, but it goes right back up. And um, and uh, the the paperback just came out this uh, November, and so now I've got paperbacks and hardbacks that I carry with me. Uh, to conventions and people can come up and of course I autograph them and personalize them. Um, but yeah, you can pick it up uh, on Amazon.com or uh, at any of the uh, e-tailers or Barnes and Nobles and and uh, Books a Million, I believe, carries them. Somebody told me that they even found it on Walmart.com. So, well, there you go. You no, know, mm-hmm. you know, if you make it to Walmart.com, now you hit the big time there. I'll tell you. <laughs> I think I think so. We're working our way up to uh to Walmart dot com. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure Walmart will love us. Mm. We have to have yeah. something to sell. I I guess in the, in the, first of all, before we can even get sell there. Your services, but, Neil Jones. I don't think they sell those kind of services at Walmart. What? What I meant your golden tones. <laughs> oh, I'm a little under the weather tonight. So, if you shoot me your uh, your address, I will send you a copy of my book. All right, excellent. That would be fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, both uh, of, I'm sure it both, out both of you. Mm-hmm. Or see, you want me to make it out to without your head? That would be very cool. Make it out to me. Oh, there you go. What? <laughs> what is he? He said, send me. And then it's a You get, I, I get the, nothing. Nice. You're the man. You receive it oh. all. Well, maybe you've been like naughty. Did you ever think of this? Did you ever right. consider he, that? He knows who's it's naughty possible. and who's been then nice. Then I should get more. You're considering I, our fan base. Aren't you here in my presence? I think that is. <laughs> oh, I think that's that, so true. That is gift enough. It's his. Uh, it's his all right. What I'll do is keep you guys from fighting. I'll send you both a copy. There we go. That's very there nice. You don't have to do that, but that is lovely of you to offer. Well, I know I don't have to, but you know what? I want to. <laughs> See? You're a sweet no, man. Her, her, her secret meeting was you can just send her one and forget Neil completely. That's pretty much true. Well, I knew that's what she meant, but at the same time, that's because she explained why, because Neil gets everything. It's true. But at the same time, that doesn't mean I'm going to slight him, so... Uh, no, I'll no. send you both one. He's very You're good. very sweet. And then Anna, you, uh, you know what, Annabelle? When yes, what was that? Week, I'll give you something I promise I'll never give Neil. Uh-oh. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> Just send me the book and we'll uh, we'll, t- we'll see what happens. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sal, it's it's been awesome to talk to you. And thank you for taking this time out of your busy schedule here at Christmas time to talk to us here on Without Your Head. But you know, I was actually looking forward to this. So um, let me uh, let me uh, tell everybody that you know, find me on Facebook. Uh, I'm out there, salizard dot com, uh, and uh, or, uh, is and uh, buy my book and uh, make me rich someday. I hope. <laughs> Maybe go. then I will be able to afford to travel around a little bit more and visit with everybody. Yeah, I like that idea as well. I, I'd promote that for uh, without your head. So basically, everyone out there should gather their massive resources and uh, contribute them to Sal Lizard and the Without Your Head team. There you go. Hey, and we'll travel together. That Excellent. would be fantastic. It. it would be fun. I had a lot of fun with you when I was with you guys last time. I'm sure if we were together more, it would be phenomenal. Agree. Mm-hmm. We just had a great time at uh, there was a new convention. We're going to talk about it here uh, momentarily in the show. Uh, uh, Bizarre Atlantic City. I believe this was their first year, and they've already announced they're going to be doing it again next year. And uh, 
It's a really fun time. My first time oh, in Link City. Yeah. And, that. yeah. Anyway, have a great night. Have a Merry Christmas. And you as well, about, sir. Like I always say, be good for goodness sake. And if you can't be good, call me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, Thank Mr. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Sal. <laughs> all righty. Good night, all. Good night. Uh, all right. We'll be right back after this uh, song by Dead Dick Hammer. Hey, this is Tim Baum from Braindead. You're listening to withoutyourhead.com.